Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako nga po pala si Raquel, isa po sa mga volunteer worker ng FCCFC lang. At isa pong malaking kagalakan para sa akin na pangunahan ng bawat isa sa ating opening prayer para sa ating service ngayon. Bago po tayo manalangin, nais ko lamang pong basahin ang mga talata sa Biblia sa aklat ng Psalms 103 verse 1 to 5 Let all that I am praise the Lord with all with my whole heart I praise his holy name Let all that I am praise the Lord May I never forget the good things he does for me He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like eagles. Ang sabi nga po sa mga talatang ito, sa kabutihan ng ating Panginoon, karapat dapat lang natin siyang sambahin at papurihan. Kaya naman habang tayo umaawit sa Panginoon, alalahanin po natin ang mga mabubuti niyang gawa sa atin. Tayo po'y manalangin. Dakilang Ama na makapangyarihan sa lahat, Salamat po sa kabutihan po ninyo sa amin. Hindi kami karapat dapat, ngunit minarapat dapat nyo kami, Panginoon. Hindi kami karapat dapat tumanggap ng pag-ibig, ngunit inibig nyo po kami, Panginoon. And you demonstrate your love through Jesus Christ, nang siya'y mamatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, upang kami ay maligtas habang kami mga makasalanan pa. Salamat, Panginoon, sa katotohanan ng mga salitang ito, sapagkat sa mga salitang ito, Panginoon, kami umaasa. Kaya naman, Panginoon, as we open up our service today, let your name be glorified. Hayaan niyo pong maitanghal ang inyong pangalan sa bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. And Lord, sa lahat ng aming gagawin, sa lahat ng aming, uh, sa lahat ng aming mga gagawin sa service na ito, Panginoon, simula sa una hanggang sa matapos, Panginoon, kayo lamang ang maitanghal. Salamat po, Panginoon. Samahan niyo po kami palagi. Ito po ang aming panalangin na may pasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Let us come together to worship our God.
Let us continue to worship our God.
Good morning, FCCF. Advance, happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. And um, let's continue to pray that God willing, next Sunday, February 20, we will be resuming our face-to-face -face worship gathering. For more information, please go to our FCCF private Facebook page for the guidelines regarding the resumption of our on-site uh, worship gathering. But it will also be available uh, online if, in, in case you're not feeling well or you're still not comfortable in attending the face-to-face -face worship service. Tolerance used to be a good word. Alam po ba ninyo sa Tagalog kung ano yung tolerance? Ang salita pong tolerance sa Tagalog ay pagpaparaya. Pagpaparaya. Yun po ang uh, Tagalog ng tolerance. And tolerance used to be a good word. But its meaning has changed. Before, Tolerance means acceptance. But now, it means approval. Before, it means acceptance. Now, it means approval. In an interview, Pastor Rick Warren explained the difference between tolerance then and tolerance now. The problem, according to Rick Warren, is that tolerant has changed its meaning. It used to mean, I may disagree with you completely, but I will treat you with respect. Today, tolerance me tolerant means you must approve of everything I do. There's a difference between tolerance and approval. Jesus accepted everyone no matter who they were. He doesn't approve of everything I do or you do or anybody else does either. You can be accepting without being approving. You can be accepting without being approving. While waiting for the time of our worship service to start, I came across an article written by Natasha Crane, the author of Faithfully Different. She said, Tolerance is the most misused word today. By definition, Tolerance o pagpaparaya. Tolerance simply means to bear with ideas other than your own. To bear with ideas other than your own. Most people who throw the word around, however, treat it as though it means to agree with or to accept those other ideas. Christians should treat all people with respect but stand firm that we believe only Christianity is true. Believing in absolute truth is not intolerant. But you know, as I've said, the word has changed but in a sense, that's also the problem then. The problem that's the problem with the church in Thyatira. Among the letters to the seven churches in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, this is the longest letter that the Lord gave. Open your Bibles in Revelation chapter 2 verses 18 to 29. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and whose feet are like 
burnished, uh, burnished, uh, burnished bronze. I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. But I have this against you. But I have this against you. That you tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works, and I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart, and I will give to each of you according to your works. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. Only hold fast what you have until I come. Only hold fast what you have until I come. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end. To him, I will give authority over the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron as when earthen pots are broken in pieces. Even as I myself have received authority from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Here we will see an example when tolerance is not tolerated by the Lord. This morning we will see an example of when tolerance is not tolerated by the Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord God, you are high and lifted up. You inhabit eternity. Your name is holy. You dwell in the high and holy place and you also dwell with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit. And may you find our hearts worthy of you dwelling with us. You revive the spirit of the lowly and you revive the heart of the contrite. May we always uphold your holiness through our words and through our works. Reveal to us your will through your word, O Lord. Please give us wisdom and strength. We thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Here we will see when tolerance is not tolerated by the Lord. Thyatira is the modern day city of Akisar in Turkey and it means white castle. Oh, it means white castle. Somebody wrote that Somebody wrote that um, our enemy, Satan, knows that he can do most damage not by pressure without, not by pressure from outside. He can do most damage not by pressure without, but by pressure within. And that is the satanic trap 
that many of the members of the church of Thyatira fell into. In fairness, the church was a very active church. According to verse 19, I know your works, your love and faith and service and faithful endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. Look at the words, your latter works exceed the first. Your latter works exceed the first. In the New International Version, it goes like this. You are now doing more than you did at first. That they are getting better at it. Their faith, their love, their works, their service, their patient endurance. They are getting better at it. They are now doing more than what they have done at first. They are becoming more active than ever. It was a very lively church. Buhay na buhay ang iglesyang ito sa Thyatira. And yet, despite that commendation, the Lord found something to condemn in this church. According to verse 20, But I have this against you. But I have this against you that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. Note the conjunction but. In the Greek, the word, the conjunction but gave a very strong contrast here. Even if they actively serve the Lord, despite that, the Lord cannot and will not ignore their sin. Kahit na ganun katindi ang kanilang pag-ibig, pananampalataya, paglilingkod, pagtityaga, subalit, hindi maaaring kalimutan na lang ng Lord ang kasalanan na kanyang nakita sa iglesyang ito sa Thyatira. Sabi nga po ng isang author, no amount of loving and sacrificial works can compensate for tolerance of evil. No amount of loving and sacrificial works can compensate for tolerance of evil. Ayaw po ng Panginoon na tayo po ay nagpaparaya sa kasamaan. In verse 18, the Lord described Himself this way. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write the words of the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. Alam niyo po, it is very interesting that Thyatira was famous for the temple of the pagan sun god, Apollo. But even the blinding light and searing heat of the sun is nothing, nothing compared to the Son of God. The Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire. The blinding light and the scorching heat of the sun is nothing compared to the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire. Nothing escapes His eyes. And that's why the Lord declared in verse 23, Sabi ni Lord, I am He who searches mind and heart. The blazing eyes of the Lord, His eyes like a flame of fire, can penetrate the deepest darkness of our minds and hearts. 
because he is the one who searches, who scrutinizes, who tests mind and heart. The Lord also said that his feet are like burnished bronze. Alam niyo po, Thyatira was also known for their bronze wares. Mga gumagawa po sila ng mga kagamitang gawa sa tanso. Bagamat posible po na yung bronze na tinutukoy dito ay alloy of different metals. But ito pong kanilang mga ginagawa na mga gawa sa tanso ay nagiging makinang. It becomes so brilliant when polished. And the description of the Lord whose feet were made of bronze or described like bronze speaks of the Lord's judgment. The Lord's judgment. And that's why the Lord declared in verse 23 that I will give to each of you according to your works. That the Lord will come to judge and He will either reward us or punish us for the works that we have done. He will give to each one of us according to our works. But notice that the Lord told Thyatira, He declared, But I have this against you. I have this against you. Alam po ba ninyo, it should strike fear in everyone. For those who are faithful, it should strike reverential fear. For those who are unfaithful, it should bring dread. It is because the Lord's judgment is sure and swift. Bagamat dito ho sa lupa, sabi ko nga, the, the wheels of justice grind ever so slowly. Tandaan po natin pagdating ho sa kalangitan, the Lord's judgment is sure and swift because it is the Lord Himself, the God of justice, our just God will be the one to judge us. We don't want the Lord to find something to oppose in our church. Lagi ko sinasabi, papaano kung suriin ng Panginoon ang ating iglesia? What if the Lord would search every nook and cranny of our church, every heart of the members in this church with His eyes blazing like fire? What would the Lord see? What would the Lord find? Will he find something that he will oppose in our church? May makikita ba ang Panginoon sa ating iglesia na kanyang, sabi nga eh, itutuwid? Na kanyang condemn. And because he is the God of justice, he will not uh, uh, commit an error in his judgment. Hindi magkakamali ang Diyos sa kanyang paghatol. He will not commit an error and in His judgment. At dahil sa Diyos ng katarungan, He will not be complacent when executing His judgment. At ano po yung kasalanan na nakita po ng Panginoon sa Iglesia, sa Thyatira? The Lord pointed out that their sin was that they were tolerant and the Lord does not tolerate their tolerance sabi po sa verse 20 but I have this against you that you tolerate that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrifice to idols. The word tolerate in the Greek, it means to allow or to permit that they have allowed this false teacher to teach and seduce the believers to immorality and idolatry. 
this is not about tolerance where they treat with respect those that they disagree with. Hindi yun yung pagpaparaya, yung tolerance na tinutukoy dito. Ang kanilang kasalanan, their fault, their sin, was that they approved, they supported a false teacher and her false teachings. Hindi po gusto ng Diyos ang ganong pagpaparaya, pagpaparaya sa maling katuruan. Pagamat, alam naman natin, of course, there are minor or non-essential teachings that <clears throat> we can just agree to disagree as a church. Pero may mga bagay na pwede na natin talaga ipagparaya. At ang iba sa kanila are just a matter of taste and preference. Halimbawa, for example, we can differ regarding the way we worship. Whether we like hymns only or contemporary worship songs. There are other legitimate disagreements that we can just agree to disagree. Like the way we give. Whether we should still tithe. That is, practice percentage giving. Or we should practice grace giving. That is, practice proportional giving. We can still treat one another as brothers and sisters even if we disagree on such minor matters. Hindi na kailangan pagtalunan pa kung dapat ba mag-ikapo o hindi. Kaya nga sa ating iglesia ang sinasabi ko, huwag kang mabibigatan sa 10%, huwag kang malilimitahan sa 10%. We can be tolerant on those things. We can accept each other even if we disagree on those minor non-essential things. I just find it sad that Christians spend so much time debating on this, those, these issues online and offline. Sabi nga, we tend to minor on the major and major on the minor. Dito pwede ang pagpaparaya sa mga bagay na wala namang kinalaman pagdating sa ano eh pagdating sa kaligtasan merong katanunga may nagtext paano isang taon na isang alagay ko isang tao na di nagpaparamdam yung umutang sa iyo kasalanan din ba yun na tinolerate mo <laughs> uh, utang dapat bayaran nang tayo'y pagkatiwalaan. Yun, iba usapan yun. <laughs> Kasi nangako ka eh, that is a matter of integrity, that is a matter of, uh, of honesty. Pero ito sa ibang bagay na sinabi ko, pwede na yung madalas sabihin ngayon na respect na lang yung opinion ko. Hindi na natin kailangan pag-awayan yung ganun mga bagay. But when it comes to major teachings, doctrines that has to do with salvation, doctrines that we have to embrace in order to be saved, in order to grow in a relationship with God, when it comes to major teachings, it is not a matter of agreeing to disagree. If we disagree, on the non-essentials, we can still call each other brothers and sisters. But when it comes to essential doctrines, that's where we draw the line. Kung baga, sa Tagalog, dyan na magkakasulian ng kandila. We cannot call each other brothers and sisters if we disagree on these important matters. Like the Trinity, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, the Bible is the word of God, that Christ died for our sins, that He rose again from the dead, and that He will come back 
to judge the world and to bring us to His kingdom. We cannot be tolerant on those issues. Hindi tayo pwede magparaya pagdating sa mga katuruan, lalong-lalo na yung may kinalaman sa kaligtasan. <coughs> we cannot approve of false teachings. We cannot approve of false doctrines. Hindi tayo pwede magparaya sa mga maling katuruan. In fact, pag tinignan po natin sa Bible, the Bible only has strong words. Matitindi ang mga binitiwang salita ng Panginoon, ang mga binitiwang salita ng Biblia. The Bible only has strong words against false, false teachers and their teachings. Sabi po rito sa, for example, sa 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, now, the Spirit expressly says that in later times, in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. Pasinin po natin ang tawag sa mga false doctrines ay teachings of demons. At kapag ikaw ay yumakap sa mga katuruan na to, you are devoting yourselves to deceitful spirits. At ang mga katuruan ito, itinuro ng mga liars, ng mga sinungaling. The Bible called false teachings as demonic, energized by Satan. Demonic. And the Bible called false teachers as liars. Dito, hindi pwede na sabihin natin, respect na lang. Anya-kanya na lang tayo ng opinion. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin yan pagdating sa mga katuruan ng Biblia. We cannot approve that which the Lord disapproved. We cannot be tolerant of teachings that the Lord did not tolerate. We cannot commend that which the Lord condemns. It is because we are called to be truthful, not tolerant. We are called to be truthful, not tolerant. And that's the case with the church in Thyatira. They were tolerant of false teachers and false teachings. Big Bang sige yung feeling open-minded eh. Ni open-minded ako sa mga katuruan na yan. Well, you should study them. You should know what makes uh, your belief true compared to their beliefs. Pero may iba, ang idea nila ng open-minded, tagus-tagusan. Sabi nga eh, <clears throat> don't be so open-minded that your brains would fall off. Pansinin po natin yung sinabi dito sa verse 24. But I also have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira who have not followed this false teaching. Deeper truths, as they call them, depths of Satan, actually. Look at the words, deeper truth, truths. Deeper truths, malalalim na katuruan. One of the marks of a false teacher, malalaman mo, ito ang isa sa mga palatandaan ng isang bulaang guro. One of the marks of a false teacher is that he or she would claim that she was the, that he or she was the only one who saw that teaching in the Bible. That no one else has seen it in the Bible before. Kadalasan, ang mga bulaang guro, malalaman mo kapag sinabi nila na sila lang ang nakakita ng ganong katuruan sa Biblia. Wala nang iba pang nakakita ng ganong katuruan sa Biblia. Kung tutusin, red flag na yun. Red flag na. Dapat tumaas na kilay mo dun. Dapat mag-isip-isip na tayo. 
it's one thing to say na ngayon mo lang siya nakita o naintindihan. Sa tinagal-tagal mong Christian, binalikan mo yung verse o kaya eh, dahil yung bago ka pa lang, hindi mo pa natatapos ang Biblia, tapos nung nakita mo yung verse na yun, nun mo lang ito nakita o naintindihan, okay lang yun eh. It's one thing to say that you just saw that in the Bible. Ebe, parang tagal-tagal ko na ito, ngayon ko lang napansin tong word na to. Okay lang yun. No problem with that. Kasi, we all grow in knowledge. Lahat matay lumalago sa kaalaman. It's one thing to say that you just saw it in the Bible. It's another thing to claim that ever since God gave the Bible, that teacher is the only one who discovered that doctrine. Ibang bagay naman ho yung sasabihin niyang siya lang ang nakakita ng katuroan na yun at wala na ibang nakakita ng katuroan na yun sa Biblia. Sa tinagal-tagal ng Biblia sa mundong ito na natapos siya 2,000 years ago na hinimay na, tinimbang na, binasa na from cover to cover ng ilang ulit, sinuri, niliglig, di ba, sinala. Sa tagal-tagal ba naman ng Biblia, alam naman ikaw pa lang ang nakakita ng katuroan na yun. That is the challenge. Kaya pag may mga nagkiklaim, these are deeper truths. Truths that have never been known before. Kabahang ka na. Kabahang ka na. Parang walang pinagkaiba sa fake news yan eh. Oh, sa fake news. <laughs> Yung sasabihin nila na, ito hindi ilalabas ito ng mainstream media. Ganyan ang mga palatandaan ng fake news. Ganon din sa false doctrine. Kapag sinabi nila na sila lang ang nakakaalam ng katuruan nito at wala nang iba pang nakakaalam kaya sa kanila ka makinig at hindi sa iba. It is interesting that uh, the Lord called, uh, sorry, that uh, the Lord pointed out that the false teacher in Thyatira calls herself a prophetess. Prophetess, babaeng propeta. It appears that, kasi prophetess, pansin niyo yung exact word na ginamit niya. It appears that she is claiming that God directly revealed that teaching to her and to her alone. Sabi nga po, ng isang commentary, she taught as if from God new deep things which some members of this strong and lively church are only too willing to explore. Nowadays, because of the global pandemic, people are so concerned that we are in the last days. Interesadong interesado tayong pag-aralan ang mga katuruan tungkol sa mga huling araw. At yun ay bunga ng pagkatakot natin. Tayo ba ay nasa mga huling araw na? People are so concerned that we are in the last days that there are those who are capitalizing on that fear. Sinasamantala nila yung ganung pag-alala, pagkatakot ng mga tao. You know, one time, my, one of my friends, the Bible teachers, has posted a warning regarding a cult that conducts seminars on the book of Revelation. Nung pinost ko nga yun, one of our members uh, called me and said, Oh, pastor, nabasa ko rin yan. May nag rin sa akin dyan. Buti na lang hindi ako umatin. Buti, yan, nakita ko yung, yung pinost mo. When I posted about that group, one of their members sent me a private message. At do sa private message, he claimed that only his leader has exclusive knowledge about the book of Revelation. At yun ang problema sa mga false teachers. Pansin niyo Revelation. That's one of the problems with false teachers. Kasi ang style ng mga ganyan, they focus on unclear or obscure passages. 
Eh, ang revelation, punong-puno ng mga symbols eh. Kahit nga yung mga scholars eh, naka, yung mga equally competent and godly scholars disagree on how to interpret revelation. Challenging talaga magbasa ng revelation. Pero yung mga tinatawag nating hidwang pananampalataya o yung mga kulto, they capitalize on those verses that are unclear and then they would claim that they are the only ones who were able to understand those passage. Like may isang hidwang pananampalataya, may isang kulto, nabasa doon sa Bible, sa 1 Corinthians 15, yung baptism for the dead. Ang kiniklaim nila, yung katulad ng ginagawa nila sa kanilang church, na kalimbawa ako, halimbawa ako, no? Uh, patay na yung lolo ko, eh, na-convert ako sa grupo nila. Na-convert ako sa grupo nila. Ngayon, pwede ako magpabaptize pero sa pangalan ng lolo ko para siya rin maging miyembro na ng grupo namin at maligtas na. Pero, pag tininom may baptism of the dead, ma, ma- komplikado yan. May nag-text. Nakakatawa naman, napaka-interactive ng ating service, no? At sana, pag nag-face-to-face gathering na tayo, pwede pa rin naman kayo magtas ng kamay at magtanong. May nagtanong dito, the challenge is how uh, how will intolerance to the doctrines outside ours uh, affect on how we personally relate to sa mga iba yung pananampalataya sa atin. Alam nyo, ganito yan. Sabi ko nga, kung ang tolerance, it means acceptance, respect. Okay yung tolerance na yun. Pero kung tolerance ang ibig sabihin, approve, hindi ho okay yung tolerance na yun. Uh, uh, we are to speak the truth in love and I'll talk to you about that. Na we can disagree with love. Yun ho yung dapat nating tandaan. We are not attacking people. We are attacking the issues, the false doctrine. If you study the Bible, ito pong mga tao na natangay ng mga maling katuruan, sinabi ng Biblia, mga nabihag mga biktima, hindi sila ang kaaway natin. Yun po yung ating tatandaan. Now, going back do sa palatandaan sa mga kulto, one of the uh, uh, marks of a cult is that they tend to focus on unclear or obscure passages and claim that they are the only ones who can understand these passages. But you have to remember this. Merong rule of interpretation. Itong rule interpret the unclear with the clear. Interpret the unclear, obscure passages with the clear passages. Sabi ni Mark Twain eh, I have no problem with verses I do not understand. I have problem with verses I do understand. Kasi nga, yung mga verses na naintindihan mo, malalagot ka dun eh. We are to interpret the implicit with the explicit. So, alimbawa, nabasa mo yung baptism of the dead. No, instead na maniwala ka na pwede kang magpabautismo, kumbaga proxy baptism para sa mga namatay mo ng kamag-anak. Kaya nga mahilig sila na tumingin sa genealogy, tetrace nila yung mga kamag-anak mo. Tapos yung mga kamag-anak mo na yon ay, ay magpapabautismo ka sa ngalan nila, para sa kanila. E arali mo muna sa Biblia. Ano ba tinuturo ng Biblia pagdating sa bautismo? Na hindi nakakaligtas ang bautismo, balino na tinuturo ng Biblia na ang kaligtasan ay sa pananampalataya lang. Malinaw yun. So, yung malinaw, magpapaliwanag dun sa mahirap intindihin na talata. So, yung baptism of the dead, hindi pwede na yung interpretasyon nila kasi pag pinag-aralan mo yung baptism, hindi nakakaligtas ang bautismo. Pagpapahayag lang ito ng ating pananampalataya. Subalit, hindi nakapagliligtas ang bautismo. Yun ang ibig ko sabihin. Let the clear interpret the unclear. Paul or Peter already warned us about such tactics of false teachers using the unclear passages. The apostle acknowledged, totoo naman, that there are passages in the Bible that are hard to understand. Pag kayo po pumunta rito sa opisina ko, I can show you books na, for example, hard sayings of the Old Testament. 
hard sayings of the New Testament. The hard sayings of Paul. Pero ano po ako mong libro dito tungkol dyan? There are Bible passages that are hard to understand. Sabi nga ni Peter sa 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 to 17. And remember our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters. Some, take note, some of his comments are hard to understand. Imagine even Peter admitted that there are some things that Paul wrote that are hard to understand. Ang maganda, sabi ni Peter, some, not all, some, may mga. Sinulat si Pablo na mahirap unawain. And take note, ang sinabi niya, hard to understand. Hindi niya sinabing impossible to understand. So challenging. Of course, uh, pananagutan pa rin natin magpatuloy ng pag-aaral. Kahit na may mga talata na mahirap unawain, syempre pananagutan natin pag-aralan yan. Bagamat nandun yung humility mo, na posibleng nagkamali ka sa pag-intindi doon, pero pananagutan natin araling mabuti ang salita ng Diyos. Some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable Kita nyo naman kung anong klaseng words ang ginagamit ng Bible pagdating sa mga false teachers. Those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different just as they do with other parts of Scripture. And this will result in their destruction. You already know these things, dear friends. So be on guard that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. And so be careful with those who claim that they have hidden knowledge or deeper truths. Eh, sa Bible po, kinundem po ni, ni Lord yun. Sabi nga rito sa Revelations 2.24, again, But I also have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira who have not followed this false teaching. Deeper truths as they call them. Depths of Satan, actually. Sige niyo po yung mga salitang gilamit. Depths of Satan. Baka akala mo, malalim na katuruan. Yung pala, malalim na libingan. Baka akala mo, katuruan na ng Diyos. Yun pala, kasinungalingan ni Satanas. Baka akala mo, nakatisod ka na ng ginto. Yun pala, natansu ka. Kaya ingat tayo sa mga magsasabi na meron silang natuklasan sa Biblia na wala pang ibang nakakita ever since. Kasi yun mga palatandaan tapos ang hilig pang mag-focus sa mga obscure passages. Balikan po natin yung verse 20. But I have this against you that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. Now, pansinin po ninyo yung Jezebel. Ang problema lang sa Pilipinas, sirena si Jezebel. Yan ang alam natin. Jezebel ay yung sirena ni Mars Rabelo. Pero huwag nyo isipin, nang binabagin dito sa Biblia, si Marian Rivera o si Ann Curtis. Yung ibang Jezebel yun. Comics yun. Itong Jezebel na tinutukoy dito sa Bible, the Lord associated this false teacher, this prophetess, with an evil queen in the Old Testament. 
Ito po yung asawa ni King Ahab na kinonfront po ni Prophet Elijah sa First Kings. Yan po yung tandaan natin. Yun yung Jezebel na tinutukoy dyan. Ngayon, kung sakali na may kilala kayo, pinangalanan ng magulang na Jezebel, hindi ho ito yung tinutukoy niya Jezebel. Yun yung tinutukoy niya yung sa comics, yung kay Mars Arabelo. Pero yung pangalang yun, hindi ginagamit ng mga tao sa Biblia na pang pangalan sa anak nila kasi hindi magandang pangalan yun sa kanila. Pag ang tinutukoy, yung evil queen na yun. Sabi nga, the church was permitting a false prophetess to influence the people and lead them into compromise. And it's not likely that this woman was actually called Jezebel, meaning hindi talaga niya yung pangalan yun. Tinawag lang siya, binansagan lang siyang Jezebel. Since such an infamous name would not be given to a child. The name is symbolic. Symbolic. Jezebel was the idolatrous queen who enticed Israel to add Baal worship to their religious ceremonies. Pag pinunta nyo sa First Kings, sundan ninyo, bilanggit doon, itong hari na to ay mas masama ang ginawa niya doon sa haring sinundan niya. Tapos susunod na naman, babanggitin, itong hari na to mas masama ang ginawa niya kaysa sa sinundan niya. Tapos, dumating si Ahab, sinabi, siya na yung pinakamasamang hari na wala nang nakagawa pa nung ginawa niya. At isa doon, yung pag-aasawa niya kay Jezebel, na isang pagan queen. And Jezebel was the one who introduced Israel to worship Baal. At paulit-ulit yan, laging problema ng Israel yan, bumabalik-balik sila. Pag nagbabackslide sila, bumabalik sila sa pagsamba kay Baal. And this false teacher, labeled by the Lord as Jezebel, this prophetess led the church in Thyatira to idolatry and immorality. Ang idolatry, it's not just about statues made of wood, stone, or metal. Although that includes that. Especially pag sinaba mo yan. Idolatry is also about wrong or false ideas, wrong teachings about who God is and what He has done. That becomes a mental idolatry at kapag in-embrace mo yung mga idea na yon, that becomes a heart idolatry. At lagi ko sinasabi sa inyo, ideas are not neutral. Ideas have consequences. Right belief leads to right behavior. Wrong belief leads to wrong behavior. Kung ano talaga pinaniniwalaan mo, yun na makikita sa buhay mo. And idolatry leads to immorality. A wrong idea of God leads to a wrong idea about how to live a life for Him. Kaya nga, their idolatry led to immorality. Because of the influence of this false teacher called Jezebel, who claimed to be a prophetess, the church in Thyatira participated in idolatry, eating food, sacrifice to idols, and the members of the Church of Thyatira practice sexual immorality. Kaya mahalaga talaga that we focus on the truth and we reject error. That's why we should be truthful and not tolerant. And if you look at verse 22 to 23, you know that the Lord called uh, what they are doing the Lord called it adultery. Adultery. Because being tolerant of false doctrines, approving wrong teachings, approving false doctrines is unfaithfulness to the Lord. It is spiritual, sexual immorality. Yan ang tatandaan natin. Kaya mabigat po ang issue nito. Bigat po ang issue na to. There are at least two false teachings. Although marami pa. 
But there are at least two false teachings that we usually encounter as far as our salvation is concerned. Ang una po, remember this word, legalism. Legalism. Ano po yung legalism? It is the teaching that good works can save us or good works can keep us in God's good favor. Yun po yung legalism. Salvation, thinking that salvation is through good works. Not only by faith, but faith plus good works. The problem with legalism is that it dilutes the grace of God. Pinabababaw niya, binabantuan niya, nawawalan ng saysay ang kagandahang loob ng Diyos. Legalism dilutes the grace of God. Kasi sabi nga ni Paul, but if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. It will be contradictory if you say that we are saved by grace plus works. Because if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So, that's the problem no isang extreme, no? Legalism. The other extreme, another wrong teaching when it comes to salvation is licentiousness. Yung isa, legalism. Yung pangalawa, licentiousness. In other words, licentiousness turns the grace of God into a license to sin. Nagiging katwiran ng kagandang loob ng Diyos sa pagkakasala. Isa sa tinuturo ng licentiousness is that we can live the way we want to live after accepting our Lord Jesus as Savior. And Jude warned us about those false teachers. Sabi po sa Jude chapter 1 verse 4, for some godless people have slipped in unnoticed among us. Persons who distort the message about the grace of our God in order to excuse their immoral ways. In order to excuse their immoral ways. They have turned the grace of God into a license to sin. At tingnan nyo yung kakambal niya. And who reject Jesus Christ, our only Master and Lord. If you pervert the grace of God, you are rejecting Jesus Christ as your Lord. And long ago, the scriptures predicted the condemnation they have received. Tandaan po natin ito. Yes, we can come to God just as we are. But when we experience the grace of God, we cannot stay as we are because His grace changes us. Pansinin ninyo dun sa Jude, again, idolatry and immorality went hand in hand. We should avoid both legalism and licentiousness. According to verses 21 to 23 ng uh, Revelation chapter 2, Sabi ng Lord, I gave her time to repent. Binigyan siya ng Diyos ng pagkakataon magbalik loob, magsisi, talikuran ng kanyang kasalanan. I gave her time to repent. But she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto a sickbed. And those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works. And I will strike her children dead. Sa madaling salita, their situation has gone on for some time. Maybe they thought that because it appears that they were not being punished by God, they thought that God tolerated 
or God approved of their, of their sinful ways. Para yung minsan sinasagot sa akin, eh kung yung mga politikong yan korab, ba't di pa sila nakukulong? Di po ba? <laughs> di. Ang point doon, hindi dahil sa nakakapagtuloy-tuloy sa kasalanan isang tao, okay lang sa Diyos yun. Akala nila, porky hindi sila pinigilan ng Diyos, hindi sila pinarusahan ng Diyos, eh okay lang ginagawa nila. Tinolerate ni Lord, inapprove ni Lord. But you have to remember this, ha? the fact that they are continuing in sin, that they are sinking in the quicksand of sin, the fact that they are continuing in, this, in their sin, getting entangled more and more in their sin, that is a punishment by itself na parusa na yon na nakapagpatuloy ka sa kasalanan mo. That doesn't mean that God tolerated your lifestyle. That means that God is still giving you time to repent. And that doesn't mean that God will just let it, let it, for, let it continue. Sabi dito, in fact, the Lord will punish them soon until and unless they repent. Ang tindi nga ng imagery na ginamit dito eh. I will throw her onto a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation. Kumbaga eh, they were in bed with her in her false teachings, figuratively speaking. And they will be in the bed of sickness and suffering with her. The punishment most probably will be spiritual. But that also includes the physical. Meron din tayo mababasa sa Bible na mga pinarustuhan ng Diyos physically. At uh, sabi nga po sa isang commentary, Christ promised sudden and immediate judgment, called her sin adultery, and promised that all who followed her would suffer intensely. He also promised, I will strike her children dead, meaning that suffering would extend also to her followers. The judgment would be so dramatic, magiging halimbawa sila sa ibang church. They will be made as an example. The judgment would be so dramatic that all the churches would know that Christ is the one who searches hearts and minds. Yun ang nakakatakot. It is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. At dito makikita natin, buti na lang, buti na lang, praise God, that there's a godly remnant in the church in Thyatira. Not everyone tolerated, not everyone approved of the false teacher and her false teachings. Sabi po rito sa verses 24 to 25, But to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay hold on you any other, I do not lay on you any other burden. Only hold fast until I come. He only gave those faithful people, that godly remnant, one command. Only hold fast what you have until I come. They were not tolerant. And the Lord commanded them to stay truthful, to hold on to the truth. Just like this godly remnant, tayo din, we must test everything. Hold fast what is good. Hold fast what is good and abstain from every form of evil. Saan natin nakikita sa ngayon yung ganitong tolerance na kinukondem ni Lord sa Thyatira? Gusto ko yung sinulat ni Warren Wisby. Sabi ni Warren Wisby, 
It is interesting to contrast the churches at Ephesus and Thyatira. The Ephesian church was weakening in its love, yet faithful to judge false teachers. While the people in the assembly at Thyatira were growing in their love, but too tolerant of false doctrine. Both extremes must be avoided in the church. Yung puro love lang at yung puro truth. Kasi ang sabi ng Bible is speaking the truth in love. And speaking the truth in love is the biblical balance. Unloving orthodoxy and loving compromise are both hateful to God. Unloving orthodoxy and loving compromise are both hateful to God. We may not we may claim that we are not like the church in Thyatira. Hindi kami yan, hindi kami yan, hindi kami ganyan. Pero nakalulungkot that I see believers nowadays who claim that it is hateful and unloving to expose the truth. But that's the same as the fault of the church in Thyatira. Hindi po pwede kasi nga sabi ko nga doon sa isang forum where I spoke sa among college students. Sabi ko, we claim to be the followers of the Lord who declare that He is the truth and then magsishare ka ng fake news. Tapos pag tinuwid ka, sasabihin mo, respect lang. Di ba? Kanya-kanya lang tayo ng opinion. Eh mali nga eh. I disagree with that mentality that we must compromise the truth in order to be loving. It is actually loving to tell the truth. It is unloving to tolerate lies. Hindi po pagkamuhi o kawalan ng pag-ibig ang pagsasabi ng totoo. Sapagkat ang tunay na pag-ibig nagtutuwid ng kamalian. Mali po ang mangunsinte ng kasinungalingan. We must be truthful and not tolerant. Hindi lang sa mga teachings ng Bible, sa buhay. Kailangan manindigan tayo sa tama. Tama, magmahal tayo, pero ang pagmamahal ay naipapakita sa pagpapahayag ng katotohanan. Sadly, I have encountered time and again that there are Christians who are tolerant of sin and error and they even question those who are truthful. May nagtanong pa nga sa akin, alam mo ba ang totoo? Hindi mo naman alam lahat. Totoo, hindi ko lang alam lang lahat. Hindi ko naman sinasabing alam ko lahat. But I am accountable to God for what I know. Mari hindi ko alam lahat, pero yung alam ko, pananagutan ko sa Diyos. And I am responsible to the Lord to preach and teach what people need to hear and not what people want to hear. Hindi po ko tinawag ng Diyos na magpastor para sabihin po yung gustong marinig ng tao. Tinawag po ako ng Diyos na maging pastor para sabihin ko ano kailangan marinig ng tao. And since God is the God of truth, to deny the truth is to deny God Himself. To deny the truth is to deny God Himself. Kailangan po balance yun, truth and love. Of course, truth without love is brutality. But love without truth is hypocrisy. We must have both. We must speak the truth in love. And the Lord promised the godly remnant in the church of Thyatira that they will reign with Him when the Lord reigns here on earth in His millennial kingdom. Sabi po rito, The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end to him I will give authority over the nations. At inilapat ng Panginoon maging sa kanila yung description sa kanya sa Psalm. And he will rule them with a rod of iron as when earthen pots are broken in pieces even as I myself have received authority from my Father. We will reign, those who are overcomers will reign with the Lord in the millennial kingdom. But it has an application here and now. 
because we proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God and people must submit to the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi nga po eh, sabi nga po, for the authority over the nations, which is given to Christ in Psalm 2 and to the church here, is authority to proclaim the rule or kingdom of God. And he who rejects that rule will perish, but he who accepts it will live. If we belong to the godly remnant, kung hindi tayo kasama doon sa mga nagparaya sa kasamaan, at tayo po ay nanindigan sa katotohanan ng katulad ng godly remnant na yon, if we belong to their kind, we must proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Sapagkat, tandaan ninyo to, if a person has a wrong idea about Christ, if a person has the wrong Christ, he will be wrong forever. And that is dangerous. Kapag kinamatayan niya yung paniniwala niyo, kapahamakan yun. Kaya kinakailangan pahayag natin ang katotohanan. We must proclaim the good news to all people. At hindi lang yun. The Lord also promised in verses 28 to 29, And I will give him the morning star. He was an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Ano yung morning star na yun? Sabi sa 2 Peter 1.19, And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? When we are faithful with the little knowledge that we have, we will be entrusted with much knowledge. Sabi nga sa Bible, pag tinignan nyo yung parable of the sower, if you, are a, if you have a submissive heart, you are a good soil, you receive the word of God. Ang sabi doon, he who has will have more. Si sabi doon na kapag ikaw, you have desire to know God, to know God, God will further reveal himself to you. If you are faithful with the little truth that you have, you will be entrusted with much. When we are truthful and not tolerant, we will grow in the knowledge and wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who is disobedient will miss out on what the Lord is teaching in His Word. But if we listen, if we have ear to hear what the Lord is saying, sabi nga, para daw, the day will dawn and the morning star will rise in our hearts. If we have ear to hear what the Lord is saying, He will lead us to the real deep truths of the Bible, not the deep lies of Satan. In other words, pinangako ng Panginoon, pag nanindigan ka sa katotohanan, we will get to know Him more intimately. If we are in the church in Thyatira, will you be part of his godly remnant? Or will you be part of the corrupted members of the church? Would you make a stand and be truthful? Or would you be tolerant of sin and error? Brothers and sisters, we are called to be truthful, not tolerant. Truthful, not tolerant. Let us pray. Lord, your word is truth. You are the God of truth. When we uphold the truth, we exalt you. When we deny the truth, we deny you. I pray that each of one of us will be truthful. Forgive us also when, we, when, when, when what we say and what we do are not the same. We repent of such hypocrisy. 
Forgive us, O Lord. May we speak the truth in love. Guide us to be truthful and not tolerant. May we not be ashamed of the good news of salvation. Give us the boldness to proclaim the gospel, for it is your power unto salvation for those who believe. Lord, heal our land. As we resume our face-to-face gatherings next week, I pray that you would protect us and that we would once again enjoy worshiping you physically with the brethren. We look forward to fellowshipping with one another. Thank you and we glorify. And before I give the benediction again, let me announce that next week, God willing, February 20, next Sunday, we will be resuming our face-to-face gathering. Please refer to our private Facebook page for the guidelines regarding the resumption of our worship face-to-face or on-site worship service. And now, to Him who is able to keep us from falling, is able to keep us from stumbling. To Him who is able to present us blameless before His glorious presence with great joy. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.
Oh, 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 oh,